there is a pattern that is quite universal that determines perception and that in turn determines what we can create and design and obviously determines our modes of analysis. Now this pattern is represented by the growth of a seed into a flower. So we think about that, there's a seed, there's some growth and it culminates in this flower. And if we analyze this pattern, there's three phases to it. There's a first phase in which you have a seed which is a distinct isolated entity that appears to have finite boundaries. And there's a second phase in which there's a lot of growth that takes place. This growth can often be irrational. There's growth of a root structure, of a tendril structure. There's a lot of exchange with the environment. And then there's a third stage where the meaning inherent in the seed becomes apparent as it culminates in a flower. Now, when we take these three phases and we multiply it by mind, by the operation of mind, what we really get is a mind that might operate in three different ways. We have a mind that when multiplied by the seed is really driven by maintaining status quo. It wants those fixed boundaries, it wants minimal change, it wants things to always be what they were. When you have mind that's multiplied by that phase of growth which is often irrational, what you get is this stage of experimental growth where there's a number of different trials, errors, different modes of expansion that the mind pursues that may not be ordered by thought or by reason entirely. The third stage where you have the flower is where the meaning and comprehensiveness of things are what is being driven at and here essentially what you have is through this multiplication of this pattern with the mind you have three different modes of operation of the mind. Now the thing is that these modes of operation are not necessarily ordered. In fact, if you graph it out, what you'll see is that oftentimes, so if you take the three areas, the meaning, the experiment, and the status quo, and any one person's operation of the mind, there might be a lot of variation, in fact, being stuck in one area or the other. The question is, if that's the case, then what kind of things are we creating and how are we analyzing? It's, it's probably going to be very irrational. And what we have to do replace this irrationality by rationality and so what that would imply is if we think about the operation of mind then we more consciously the mind is operating at the level it wants to in this case perhaps the level implied by meaning and then consciously shifting to the experimental level or the status quo level at will and so what that will do is that when we have a mind that's consciously operating where it wants to operate at, it's going to have a huge implication to our creations, our design, and our analysis. I'll cover this some other time.